News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, and now 1015 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. Suspects in custody. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Tuesday, July 22nd. And you just missed about the most glorious sunrise I've seen in a long time. Uh, clouds were backlit, uh, beautiful purple and gold, and oh, just absolutely gorgeous. But it's starting to fade right now. Uh, right now, we do have 51 degrees in Missoula. Our newscast sponsored by Dr. Troy Doxey, the friendly team at Chiropractic Works. For your uh, appointment, call 728-0222. Our top story this morning, the two individuals wanted by Missoula County authorities for the robbery and attempted murder last week of a man who was shot and left to die on I-90 have been arrested. Missoula County Sheriff's Captain Brad Giffen told me yesterday that Troy Anthony Miller and Catherine Grace Evans were arrested without incident at a motel in Seattle. Warrants were issued as a result of an investigation into the shooting of a man in Missoula, which occurred Wednesday, July 16th. 2014. The arrest was made at about 2 p.m., and the couple were taken into custody without incident. Missoula detectives are heading to Seattle to conduct interviews of both Miller and Evans. Deputy Missoula County Attorney Jordan Kilby is the prosecuting attorney in this case. She says that the suspects will first appear at a court in Seattle. They will appear before a judge in Seattle, and then they have the option of waiving extradition, meaning saying, yes, I will come back to Montana, or having a hearing on their identity only. And then if they're found to be who they, who we think that they are, then they will be sent back to Montana. Miller and Evans have been charged with attempted deliberate homicide and robbery and are currently in custody in the King County Jail in Seattle. A 20-year-old Stevensville man has died after driving his ATV through a stop sign and into the path of a full-sized pickup truck. The Highway Patrol reports the crash happened about 8.30 Saturday night. The ATV driver was taken to a hospital in Missoula where he was pronounced dead. No one else was injured. The victim's name has not yet been released. A kayaker who went missing on Flathead Lake over the weekend has been identified as a Polson physician. Public Information Coordinator with Providence St. Patrick Hospital here in Missoula, Joanne Hoven, provides details. Providence St. Joseph Medical Center has learned that the Polson man kayaking on the south end of Flathead Lake and has been missing since Saturday, July 19th, is Robert McDonald, MD, a hospitalist at the medical center. Hoven relayed a message from the management of the Polson Medical Facility. James Kaiser, Chief Executive executive of Providence St. Joseph Medical Center would like to say that Rob is a valued member of our medical community and part of our St. Joe's family. Please keep Rob, his family, and friends in your thoughts and prayers. The search for McDonald's started late Saturday night when he failed to return to shore. The search continued Sunday and Monday. Authorities say he was not wearing a life jacket when he set out on Saturday. The Montana Army National Guard sent 17 soldiers and two CH-47 Chinook helicopters to Washington State to support wildfire fighting operations. Adjutant General Matthew Quinn says mutual aid agreements between the states allow Montana resources to be used in Washington State. A state of emergency was declared last week for 20 Washington counties due to the wildfires, which have now burned 370 square miles and at least 150 homes. Montana Governor Steve Bullock on Friday declared that a state of disaster exists in Washington that's severe enough that Montana support is warranted through the Emergency Management Assistance Compact. The twin-engine cargo helicopters are capable of dropping more than 2,000 gallons of water at a time from an attached bucket. Quinn says the CH-47s departed at 8 o'clock yesterday morning. Yesterday, agents with the Montana Department of Justice's Division of Criminal Investigation located Michelle Yallop and her infant son in Utah. Spokesman for the Montana Attorney General's Office, John Barnes, says the woman disappeared from an anaconda hospital just hours after her baby was born. Eventually, investigators tracked the woman down. Today, our agents received uh, further information regarding her specific location, which was a truck stop uh, near Willard, Utah, and uh, the information was relayed to authorities in Utah who went there and did in fact find her and her baby. Barnes says authorities took the baby to be checked out by medical professionals. The baby was taken to the hospital for evaluation, and I believe the Utah Department of Family Services will take custody of the child. Um, the Anaconda Deer Lodge County Attorney's Office will be handling uh, Miss Yallop's prosecution when she does get back to Montana. Yallop was arrested on felony warrants for endangering the welfare of a child and forgery.
The Montana Supreme Court says authorities cannot file new criminal charges against a person using confidential information obtained in a drug treatment court program. The court voted 7 to nothing in an opinion written July 15th that using that information violates the U.S. and Montana Constitution's protection against self-incrimination. The justices reversed a lower judge's conviction of Carlisle Plouffe. Plouffe entered Mineral County's treatment court program after being charged in 2011 with trespassing and marijuana possession. Traffic is expected to be a little slower than normal near the Broadway overpass on Reserve Street both today and tomorrow. Montana Department of Transportation Maintenance Chief Steve Felix explains why. What we're doing is a routine structure inspection. We bring a big uh, snooper truck, we call it. It's got, it's got a crane. We get underneath and look at that structure. What we're going to do Tuesday, starting Tuesday morning, a little after 7 a.m., we will be setting traffic control up in the northbound lanes on Reserve Street. We'll be closing the... Uh, right lane, driving lane, from uh, around 7.30 to, to around 2.30 p.m. for that inspection. Tomorrow, the southbound lane of the overpass will be reduced to a single lane for about the same amount of time between 7 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. Three fires since the start of June have highlighted the threat that lightning poses in the North Dakota oil patch. In each case, it was the tanks that store the toxic saltwater association with, associated with the drilling that were to blame, not the oil wells or drilling rigs. The silo-like storage tanks are made of or lined with fiberglass because it holds up better against the corrosive liquid than metal-only tanks would. Fiberglass tanks don't release the heat from lightning strikes as well as metal ones would contributing to those fires. North Dakota doesn't require companies to install lightning protections at the storage and disposal sites, although many do so anyway. Protections are no guarantee, though, as they were in place at two of the three sites set ablaze since June 1st. There's a chance of thunderstorms today, but experts are warning the really big storms are expected tomorrow. Meteorologist Genki Kino with the National Weather Service explains. This week is looking like a fairly active week for weather. On Wednesday, we get a stronger wave move in with much larger potential for some strong to severe storms. The storms will be moving in mainly from the southwest. The uh, storms may bring, again this is May, may bring quarter-sized hail as well as some possible flash flooding. Kino says after Wednesday's very cool temperatures will stay through Thursday. The high temperature in the Logan Pass area, for example, will be the high temperature in the Logan Pass area. Up in uh, Glacier Park will be in the 40s. That's the high temperature. News talk time now is 610. News talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Scattered showers and thunderstorms will develop this afternoon. Otherwise, look for a mix of sunny clouds with their highs topping out in the mid 80s. Showers and storms tonight with lows in the mid 50s. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13, your first alert station. Thank you, Brooke. Right now we do have clouds still pretty up there. Pretty sunrise, 51 degrees in Missoula right this very minute.